Aba Namaste guys, Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this Tuesday evening here in Denver, Colorado. This is quite the um, stream. I have not done a live stream. Uh, this is the longest I have not done a live stream over the past six years of doing live streams. Um, it's been about a little over five weeks much 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 has happened over the past five weeks but I wanted to jump on and share maybe an interesting story of spiritual lessons I learned over the past two weeks because I ended up going to a state in the United States I traveled to 10 different cities Paula Abba Namaste 1,372 miles Leaf Abba Namaste and uh, for one purpose and one purpose only to find out where I'm gonna be living where I'm gonna be moving to so I'd like to share this journey this adventure this travel story with you uh, for those of you who are interested I'm super excited to have you on the stream of uh, watching it live or watching the replay we're gonna be posting this over on YouTube as well at Christian R long you can follow our 600 plus videos we have over on YouTube um, so basically what happened was what brought me to this point of traveling to this state and doing 1,372 miles over a six-day period? Well, I've been living in Denver, Denver, Colorado, for the past eight years. And over the past eight years, I've had amazing experiences. I became a full-time pranic healer. I became a full-time meditation teacher. I uh, fell in love deeply. I fell, I had my heart broken deeply and a lot of uh, stories and milestones in between those major events and over the past couple of years I realized that Denver the energy of Denver the energy of Colorado not just Denver has changed dramatically um, I don't know part of it has to do with my spiritual practice as I continue to, to practice pranic healing or hatha yoga my energy body becomes more refined it becomes more sensitive Nidhi Atma Namaste becomes more sensitive to what's happening and there's been a lot of protesting, rioting, drug abuse, not so warm and fuzzy things that have been happening in Denver over the past six months because of COVID. And something dawned on me that the place I'm currently living in doesn't suit me anymore. And I've been here for about three years. This month will be three years that I've been living in this exact location in Glendale, Colorado, which is a subdivision, if you will, of Denver. Beautiful location. Everything is within a 10 minute walking distance. I've thoroughly enjoyed living here over the past three years. Police stations right there, gyms are right there, smoothie places right there, coffee shop is right there, Whole Foods, Target, everything is within a 10 minute walking distance of where I'm located. But every quarter that I've been living in this location over the past three years, the energy's gotten heavier, crime has gone up, unrest has gone up, Pollution has gone up. Darcy, I'm going to say, how's it going with the $3 million? <laughs> Hopefully you had a, a donor, one very generous donor, or many, 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 many uh, not as generous donors to give you the $3 million. So I've been looking, 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 and noticing the energy, and it's just changing. And so all of a sudden, my sleeping patterns were getting worse the past year. So every single month, over the past year, it's been getting louder and louder and louder in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evenings. In the morning because they're doing a huge construction project next door. In the afternoon because of amazing traffic that just materializes out of nowhere. And then in the evenings because of my next door neighbor. So I was like, well, what is going on here? I'm having such a difficult time resting my physical body that a couple months ago, about I took five different trips around Colorado to get away from the noise, to get away from the congestion, to get away from the constant stimulation on my nervous system. And I was like, I, I gotta get out of here. So it started to dawn on me, it's time to move on. It's time to leave Denver and maybe even leave Colorado. So about a month ago, I had an opportunity to go to the spiritual vacation, which is for our Hatha yogis from around the country come together. It's a one year, one time of year event where we have not, uh, nine days 
of coming together to do deep meditations, to do deep healings, and hear lectures to improve our understanding and awareness of who and what we are as the soul and what is the divine plan for us and at large. So I said, okay, I'm gonna to go to the nine day retreat or nine day spiritual vacation and one of, my, uh, one of my wishes is to get clarity as to what is the next chapter of my life because it's not in Denver anymore. It's not in Glendale anymore. I like gotta get out there. So go through the whole nine day retreat, lots of purification, lots of meditation, lots of awareness, but I still don't know where I'm supposed to go. I'm still w fuzzy. Do I go here? Do I go here? Do I go here? So I had my opportunity. I had my opportunity. I ended up sitting down with one of the master pranic healers the last hour of the nine day spiritual vacation. And I said, okay, this is my challenge. I'm looking for the next place. Where do I go? What do I do? How do I do it? And she goes, okay, what are you looking for in the place that you moved to? And I said, it's got to be quiet. It's got to be fulfilling. And it's got to like set me up for greater prosperity. She goes, how about this? She gets out a piece of paper and she writes, where will Christian be the happiest in all areas of his life? I was like, oh, okay, that's not a bad one. I can, I can hang with that one. Where will Christian be the happiest in all areas of his life? So she says, what are the places that you had in mind? So I start listing this place, this place, this place, this place, like Park City, Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah, Telluride, Colorado, Creed, Colorado, Steamboat Springs, Colorado, so basically two different states. But then out of nowhere, the day before, I was in meditation and the word Billings, Montana came into my awareness. Now, for those of you who don't know, Billings, Montana, kind of in the middle of nowhere, it's in the southwest portion, I'm sorry, the southeast portion of Montana. 105,000 people, it's the biggest city in all of Montana with only 105,000 people. And I was like, uh, and Billings, Montana. She goes, okay, Billings, Montana. Of all the places, the only one I have not been to was Billings, Montana. Interesting, right? So she says, okay, let's scan the energy. So for those of you who are not pranic healers, scanning means feeling the energy connected to something. So what are we scanning? We're scanning for the amount of happiness that is generated from that particular area. Park City, Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah. So we're scanning or feeling the energy connected to these different areas. And before we even did any scanning, she said, Billings, Montana. I'm like, how could it be Billings, Montana? Never even been there. I don't know anyone. There's no pranic healing community out there. There's no meditation group that I know of. No one's in Mont Billings, Montana. So I scan each of the cities that I've been to looking for my ideal location. Get the last one on the list. The energy is super strong and it's even. Interesting. Strong and even. Very interesting. Hmm. Billings, Montana. So she says, Billings, Montana. Easy. I'm like, you're right, but why? Never been to Billings. And it's been 17 years since I've been to Montana driving through on a Greyhound. You know, the big Greyhound buses? I was going from Vancouver, British Columbia, 17 years ago, when I, where I learned of pranic healing, which is my life's purpose, and Dharma in this incarnation, and the bus partially went through Montana, have no idea where it went through to go into Colorado, to go from Montana, Wyoming, into Colorado. So I'm super excited. The nine day spiritual vacation is done, I have clarity. Okay, great, let's make it happen. I'm gonna go into, uh, I'm gonna set up a three day trip. I'm gonna go to Billings, Montana. I'm gonna tear it up in Billings, Montana and find out, Sean, I'm gonna stay and find out if this is the place that I'm supposed to hang my hat. Don't know if it is, but we'll find out. So I'm looking around online. I'm looking for airfare. Plane tickets are relatively inexpensive. I'm looking for um, rent-a-car stuff, relatively expensive. I thought, wow, rent-a-cars are expensive in Billings, Montana. Who knew, right? Gas is relatively cheap in Montana, not a big deal. And I'm thinking to myself, well, wait a minute. Let me talk to a couple people. So I end up talking to a client of mine. He goes, oh, 
1993, my wife and I drove through Billings, Montana, and we also went to Bozeman, Montana, which is about two hours away. And I was like, Bozeman, Montana. Bozeman, Montana. Okay, okay. So there's two places, Billings and Bozeman. All right, not too far apart. All right, if I'm going to be in Billings for three days, I can make this happen. Right? A little, little jettison, right? From one city, one small city to an even smaller, small city. Okay? So then I end up talking to another client who's friends with this client, and he goes, oh, yeah, I did a, uh, I did a, a work project in Billings, Montana. It's a nice place, a little industrious. And I'm thinking, industrious? Like industrial? He goes, yeah, yeah. I'm like, that means loud. That means construction. That means huh, that's not going to be in alignment with what I need, want, and desire. Quietness, peacefulness, fulfillment, prosperity, right? So I'm like, all right, well, I'll keep it in the back of my mind. Billings, uh, I'm still looking to go to Billings. Then my next door neighbor, two doors down, <clears throat> I tell her, hey, I'm not renewing my lease this year. Are you guys renewing your lease? What's the story? And they're like, no, we're going to go month to month, but we're probably going to be heading out. Uh, we're going to stay in the area, but we'll probably go north of Denver. I was like, okay. And they go, where do you think of going? I go, I don't really know, but I'm looking into Billings, Montana. Have no association, affiliation, and connecting to Billings, Montana. And she goes, okay. Well, funny enough, my brother has a business there for the past 15 years in Billings, Montana. This person's been my neighbor for two and a half years, had no idea that she had a brother, and had no idea her brother was in Billings, Montana. Another synchronistic event. Very vulnerable to share, Christian. Thanks, Nitty. Appreciate it. So I'm setting everything up. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to Billings, Montana. I'm going to make it happen. And then as I'm on YouTube, because I'm a big researcher, I'm a big researcher, within Pranic Healing, one of the masters um, said one of the greatest lessons that I've learned in Pranic Healing over my 16 years as a practitioner. He said these three things. He says, what does the energy tell you? What does the mind tell you? And what does the heart tell you? Right? What does the energy tell you, which means scanning or feeling the energy of something connected to that place or person or event? What is the energy? Does the energy feel expanded? Does it feel contracted? Does it feel clean? Does it feel heavy? Does it feel happy? Does it feel sad? What does the energy feel like of that particular thing that you're scanning? So what does the energy say? What does the heart say? The heart usually has the answer like that. But here's the thing, never been to Billings, Montana. I don't know what my heart says about Billings, Montana or Montana in general. And then what does the mind say? Andrew, I'm a namaste, Darcy's on. What does the mind say? So that gives me an opportunity to practice my mind. I'm gonna go onto YouTube and I'm gonna look up Montana. Give me all the facts and figures. Give me all the different major cities. Let me watch a couple of videos about these cities. What's the feedback? What's the comment? What are people saying? And so these are some of the interesting things about Montana as I was researching. Number one, um, it is the fourth largest state landmass in the United States, but it is the ninth smallest state population wise. Montana state, but only 1,073,000 people in the entire state, which means six people per square mile. Think about that, six people per square mile throughout the state of Montana. It is the second fittest state in the United States after Hawaii, which is the fittest. So I was like, all right, fit people, industrious people, and they're all spread out. No one's on top of each other. I'm liking this so far. Um, it is a purple state. What do I mean by purple state? So politically speaking, in general, Montana leans to the right, leans red, leans Republican, right? But in the more progressive towns, which there aren't a lot of towns throughout Montana, it, it, it leans left or Democratic. So in general, it's kind of a swing state. It's a purple state, which means they practice moderation, right? In general, they practice moderation. I was like, huh, I like that. So it's not super red or super blue, it's right in the middle, it's purple. Moderation, interestingly enough, okay, okay. The average age of Montana is 40 years old. Well, guess what? This soul, this year, turned 40. So I was like, ah, oh, I fit right in. Average, okay, I can deal with that. One of the very few times I can deal with average. 
And then there is a lake in Montana called Flathead Lake, which is the largest freshwater lake west of the Great Lakes. So the Great Lakes that look like oceans right near uh, Michigan, west of them, Flathead Lake is the largest lake in the United States, largest freshwater lake. It is gigantic. It is 197 square miles. Think about what I just said. 197 square mile lake. That is a giant, giant lake. Okay? So I was like, all right. So which towns am I going to go visit? I'm doing my research. I'm looking around. Where am I going to go? So I mapped it out from start to finish. I land in Billings, Montana. Then I go to Bozeman, Montana. Livingston. Then I go to... Um, then I go to Four Corners, then I go to Belgrade, then I go to Dillon, then I go to Missoula, then I go to Whitefish, then I go to the capital, Helena, Montana, and then I go back to Billings. So I did a big fat, Beth, I'm gonna say, big fat juicy circle going through Montana. Big circle that was 1,372 miles. And I didn't do a lot of like ancillary driving. I pretty much went to a town, drove a little bit, and then got back on the back on the road. I stayed in four Airbnbs and one hotel. So I want to share with you guys some of the lessons, the spiritual lessons I learned in my travels throughout Montana. What was I looking for? Right? What was the purpose? What was the purpose of going to Montana? Finding out which place I would be the happiest in all areas of my life. So as I land in Billings, I'm like, nice weather, nice people. So the first thing that I noticed in my travels of throughout Montana, sounds lovely, how far is Sturgis? Sturgis is in North Dakota, probably not too far. I can't give you the exact because I didn't make it out to North Dakota. The reason I wouldn't make it out to North Dakota for two very strong reasons. One, it's super flat. Two, it's super cold, not interested. Super flat and super cold. So my first spiritual lesson, if you will, let's call them lessons. As I'm driving all over Montana, I'm in awe of the nature. And I realize that we are as healthy as our environment. It's like you have a fish that's in water. If that water is dirty, diseased, poisoned, the fish will be adversely affected almost instantaneously. And I realized from the contrast of being here in Denver and all the chaos and turmoil that's been happening over the past year, putting myself into Montana, into nature, evergreens everywhere, I wouldn't call them mountains, I would call them big hills on the right side and on the left side everywhere, and then large bodies of water. Samantha, I'm gonna say, large bodies of water everywhere, your nervous system or my nervous system constantly felt rejuvenated, regenerated, and revitalized the entire time I was there. I slept like a newborn infant every single day that I was there. I had some of the most beautiful, relaxing, long distance drives. I averaged about 233 miles every single day driving. 233 miles. Now you might think, wow, that must be super boring. 233 miles and nothing in right side, left side, or front of you. Just one teeny tiny town after another. Must have been so boring. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. So that was one of my big realizations. Number one, being in nature, being in a healthy, nourishing, nurturing environment is good. You have access to the solar energy good for the body. You have access to the air energy, good for the body. You have access to lots and lots of fresh ground energy, good for the body. A lot of lushness, a lot of green, a lot of vibrancy in the environment, which affects who? The people there. Make sense? Number two, this is going to sound kind of odd. Number two was sweetness everywhere. You're like, well, what do you mean by sweetness? I literally mean sweetness. Number one, honey farms everywhere. I don't know what the deal is with Montana and honey. I thought Colorado had a thing with honey and bees. Montana seems to have a more aggressive thing with honey and bees. So I noticed a lot of sweetness. Sweetness in the water. 
the water literally tasted sweet in the towns that I was in. The air and how it felt in my body really activated my heart, which awakened what? Happiness, bliss, joy, enthusiasm, right? So there was sweetness in the air to in the environment. And then lastly, there was sweetness in the people. I have traveled the entire country, almost the entire country. I've been to 45 some odd states. I've traveled almost the entire country. I've met thousands of people in my travels and people from Montana are some of the nicest, sweetest people that I've ever met. Everywhere I went, people were making eye contact, right? People were waving and they were genuinely smiling at you. And I go, do they think I'm an out of towner and that's why they're doing it? Do they think I'm a local and that's why they're doing it? Why are people so kind? Why are people so sweet? I remember I went to a pizza place in Whitefish, Montana, and the guy was a little bit taller than my son, probably 19 or 20 years old, big, big curly afro, super good looking guy. And he was taking my order and then you know he came looking for me to give me my order and he was so genuine and so nice and so kind and I was like, he's just taking orders for people at a pizza place. But I could feel it and then I went to another place in Whitefish of a girl that was giving me an ice cream. Ugh, homemade, handmade ice cream in Whitefish, Montana. I don't wanna talk about it, it was amazing. But she was probably 19 or 20 as well, born and raised in Whitefish tiny town, born and raised, and I said, what do you think of Whitefish? She goes, love everything about it, been here my whole life. Super kind, super sweet, right? Good eye contact. It was really beautiful, sweetness of the people. Number two, autonomy. So there have been research done of what people want in life. And you know what's the most important thing that people are looking for? You would think recognition, which is very high up there. You would think money, because people are always talking about money all the time. You know what it is? Autonomy. What is one of the most important values for people is autonomy, the ability to come and go as they please, when they please. And I noticed that there's a lot of autonomy in Montana because very few places in Montana have speed limits. You can drive as fast as you want as long as you want with no problem because there's no speed limits. So there's very few cops. So you have autonomy. Ron, I'm gonna say, good to have you back on. Autonomy. You have all these streams, rivers, giant lakes that people can just go, I'm gonna get in my bathing suit and I'm gonna dive into this lake, stream, river. That's not very common in Colorado, right? Because of the, 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 the oils on your body getting into the ecosystem, they have a challenge with that. Apparently no one cares in Montana. They're like, go ahead and do it. Oh, um, another place I went to is Big Sky. Almost forgot. Big Sky, Montana. Very, very interesting town. Big Sky, Montana. So there's a, so lesson three is autonomy. I was like, ah, oh, autonomy is so important. We just want to be left alone to do our own thing to be as creative as we want, to be as lazy as we want, to be as industrious as we want, to be in as much stillness as we want, right? We just want to do our own things. And it's funny that I'm comparing Denver of the hustle and bustle like a New York City. And I used to work on Wall Street in New York City. I worked in the uh, 40 Trump Tower, uh, 40 Wall Street in the Trump Tower. So that's hustle and bustle to a very, very high degree. And it's funny that I'm comparing Denver as hustle and bustle compared to where I was in Montana. Interesting, but I feel way more autonomy there than I do here. Number four, inspired to do my practice. So for 16 years, I've been a practitioner of pranic healing and hatha yoga. So pranic healing is the healing modality that I practice and it's my profession. And then hatha yoga is my spiritual practice to properly, rapidly, and safely evolve my little self with my big self. And I noticed that for the past seven or eight months here in Denver with COVID, it's been very, very difficult to do my practice fully. I'm doing aspects of my practice, but I'm not doing my entire practice. So I was like, well, this is interesting. 
I go to Montana, and as soon as I get off the plane, I'm inspired to do my practice. What does inspiration mean? It, it means to breathe life into. When you are inspired, you have life being breathed into you. Life of what? The higher soul being breathed into you. When you expire, what's happening? Life is being withdrawn from you. Your soul is withdrawing energy from the physical body, the emotional body, and the mental body, right? So when I was in Montana, I was inspired to do my practice and I had certain spots, I didn't pre-pick them out, I just go, all right, I'm now in this town, where in this town can I go and do my Arhatic Yoga practice? I would find a nice shoreline, I would find a nice park, I would find off to the side of the road, um, even out of hot springs, and I would do my practice. And it was wonderful, it was glorious. So much peace, so much stillness, so much sweetness that allowed me to go very deep and very far in my practice that I have not remembered for a long time being in Denver. Lesson number five, silence is golden. Silence is golden. The last time I experienced deep silence was when I was in Creed, Colorado. Check it out, either visit it or go online, look up pictures of Creed, Colorado. It's 375 people on season, off season. It's like 125 people that live in the town. It's a teeny weeny itty bitty baby mountain town that you have to drive 20 miles into the mountains to actually arrive at Creed, Colorado. That is one of the most quiet, most still places I've ever been, and it was glorious. But that was in an isolated area in Colorado. You know what I noticed in Montana? Silence everywhere. Even in Billings, Montana, the biggest city with 107,000 people, 105 to 107,000 depending upon where you're reading, quiet, still, silent. It was glorious. I was like, I don't hear any loud trucks. Even when I did hear loud noises, just because there is civilization in Montana, even when I was hearing loud things, it didn't affect me. It didn't shake me like it has been the past year, year and a half, over a year and a half in Denver. Interesting, right? So silence is golden because as a spiritual practitioner, we depend a lot on silence. And you might be saying, well, wait a minute. Can't you, can't you be still, be aware anywhere you are in the world? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. You can have stillness and awareness on a bustling train going into New York City. You can have stillness and awareness on a ferry out to Catalina Island off the coast of LA, right? You can have stillness and awareness in any and all circumstances, but which one is easier to go deeper into your spiritual life? Constantly vi being vibra vibrated or having a place that is still and quiet most of the time that allows you to go even deeper and even further in your spiritual practice, right? Where you see ashrams, yoga studios, meditation halls, are they in loud areas or are they in quiet areas, isolated areas, elevated areas, right? It doesn't mean that you can't spiritually evolve in noise. It doesn't mean you can't have a deep meditation in the center of New York City. It doesn't mean that, but it says you're, you're building a space for you to have deeper meditation experiences in quietness. Make sense? Is that fair? It has not been quiet in my place the past year and a half. Very loud. This right now, one of the quietest times I can remember right now as I'm recording this video. Number six, you guys ready for this one? It might be a little bit out there. Some of you may sign off because you're like, that's not possible. I'm gonna share a little bit, not gonna share too much. But some of you may be familiar with the expression, follow your bliss by Joseph Campbell. He was a uh, mythologist, brilliant man, was an encyclopedia of mythology and the symbolism behind mythology. Brilliant man. 
There was a PBS documentary done on him called The Hero's Journey in the late 80s. Highly recommend checking it out on YouTube. Maybe you can even purchase the DVDs or you know a digital download version. And he was the one that came up with the expression, follow your bliss, meaning when you're doing something that is in alignment with your higher soul, there's a level of ease, there's a level of bliss, there's a level of stillness as you're doing it. So for instance, right now what I'm doing is bliss. For me, it's very, very easy to do public speaking, whether it's you know, a few dozen people watching a live stream or it's several thousand people in person. I've done both. And it's a bliss activity for me. It's very easy for me to do. I feel very connected. I feel very calm. I feel very um, joyful and blissful when I'm doing this, right? So it's in alignment with my dharma. It's in alignment with the will of my higher soul versus if I was going to become a lawyer or if I was going to become a doctor or an engineer or a construction worker, right? It's out of alignment. It doesn't bring me bliss. It doesn't bring me fulfillment. It doesn't call me. Make sense? So as I'm driving all over Montana, I'm constantly having experiences of bliss, experiences of bliss, experiences of bliss. So I was like, well, let me follow my bliss. So I'm driving north, going to Whitefish, Montana. I have maybe three more hours in that drive time. And I'm in the middle of nowhere. But as I'm driving in the middle of nowhere, I see a street that goes even more into the middle of nowhere. It goes into the mountains, right, of Montana. And so I pass the turn and I go, something's telling me to go back. Something's telling me to go back and I don't quite know why. So I said, ah, I got time. What am I here to do? I'm here to explore Montana. So I said, all right, fine. Let me loop around and then let me drive on this trail. So a certain teacher guided me or inspired me to take that road. So I was like, all right, well, let's see what happens. So we drive down the road, two miles, three miles. It's about three and a half miles to the end of the road. I, a deer crosses the street. I was like, oh, that's not sweet. A deer crosses the street. Cool. You know, that could be a sign. And I get to the end of the road, and at the end of the road, I look to the left, and I just start laughing out loud. Because you wouldn't think this in the middle of nowhere for a giant purple house just to be at the end of a road. And at the end of that road was one of the most beautiful still vistas I've ever captured before. I took a picture of it. I have it. I'll probably post it at some point on Facebook. But it was so picturesque. It was so still. It was so quiet. And at the end of the road was a purple house connected to this particular spiritual teacher. Interesting, right? Another time of following my bliss was I pull up, I'm leaving Helena, the capital of Montana, heading to Billings. I'm about 30 miles outside of Helena and I come across this beautiful lake. Beautiful lake. I posted it on Facebook. You can see it. Beautiful lake. It has its own shore coming up because the lake is so giant. And people are just milling around and I go, you know what? This would be a great place to do my spiritual practice. So I sit down. I do my Rahata Yoga practice. It's beautiful so much stillness. Warm sun is hitting me. You hear the crashing of the teeny tiny baby lake waves. There's a nice gentle breeze coming in. I'm sitting on the ground and I'm feeling the warmth of the stone underneath my butt. I was like, ah, oh. <sighs> my whole nervous system is calming and relaxing. I'm like, ha. Oh. So I do my full practice and I get up, stretch, do my exercises. And I get back in the car and I'm gonna explore the town around this lake. Just real quick, see what it's like. What is it like living in the middle of nowhere in Montana on a lake? So I drive around and the very first house that I see as I'm turning into the neighborhood, and I use that term loosely, turning into the neighborhood, what do I see? A statue of the Prayer of St. Francis, which is the meditation that I did right on the lake another sign, another clue, another, we're listening, 
we're sending you messages. Follow your bliss. I was like, whoa. Interesting. Right? Montana isn't very much known as a Catholic state. Right? Per the statue of St. Francis of Assisi. Interesting. Um, there are a couple other moments of following my bliss, but I'll, uh, I'll finish it with a, a story. Number seven, don't judge a book by its cover or don't judge a state by its cover. You're like, well, what do you mean? So as I was traveling around before going to Montana, oh, by the way, as in following your bliss, for years and years and years and years and years, I was drawn to going to Montana, but never went. I ended up living in Colorado for eight years, super grateful, right? I was never called to live in Colorado, but I was called to visit or connect with Montana, but I never went, so I wasn't following my bliss. So don't judge a book by its cover, because what was my viewpoint, or you might have a similar viewpoint, or you might understand my viewpoint, Montana, fundamentalist Christian, hardcore conservatives, hicks, hillbillies, because I come from Massachusetts, very liberal, very progressive, very democratic, very um, intelligentsia, right? So Montana's like backwoods, people with no teeth, people with no education, people that um, don't take kindly to strangers right? Don't judge a book by its cover. Like I said to you earlier, Montana, I witnessed the friendliest people I've ever seen in my entire life in that one state. Amazing. People were generally connecting, generally kind. So don't judge a book by its cover. I was judging it because of my preconceived ideas of what Montana was. Number eight, I realized something going to sound a little odd, but as a spiritual practitioner who spends so much time in the inner world, looking at energy with his eyes closed, feeling subtleties, I miss genuine connections with physical people face to face. I didn't realize it until I was traveling throughout Montana. I've been a professional energy healer for many, many years, but it's only been the past couple years that I've gone more and more and more and more into isolation. Now, what have a lot of us throughout the world experienced the past six, seven months? COVID, the coronavirus, a lot of social distancing, a lot of staying at home, a lot of not interacting with other people. And I had this realization that I miss that. I miss interacting with people. And one of the most beautiful interactions and exchanges that I had while I was in Montana was the last Airbnb house that I stayed at in Billings, Montana before I left the next morning to fly out and come back to Denver. And it was a beautiful wife who had four kids, eight years old, six and a half, three and one year old. And she was super fit, super loving, great eye contact, was a great conversationalist you know what that means right one person talks the other person intently listens then the person asks questions relative to what the person is talking about and they're acknowledging and validating and understanding each other and you feel heard and understood and you feel a connection between you and the other person that was what I was experiencing with the host parent or host wife of my Airbnb and then the next day the husband was there and I got to interact with him and what a shocker Great eye contact, great conversationalist, ask good questions. What did I notice with their children? Even though the oldest was eight, the youngest was one, good eye contact, well-mannered, quiet, happy, no Wi-Fi in the house, no TV in the house. They went out to the mountains two to three times per week. All the kids were homeschooled. Personal development books all over the bookshelf industrious, creative, compassionate, loving, interesting. I was like, this is such a perfect end to my time in Montana with this family. They were an embodiment of a normal, healthy, functioning family. She was from Wyoming. 
He was born and raised in Billings, Montana, and they've been together for nine years. And shocker, her parents have been together for 37 years. His parents have been together for 35 years, noticing a trend. So they have healthy models of what a good functioning relationship looks like, and they are going to instill that in the lives of their children. And the cycle continues. Something to be said about conservative Christian values of my perception of going into Montana. Number nine, be fearless. Number nine, be fearless. What do I mean by that? Some of you may know my backstory, some of you may not. Over the past 25 years, I've done a lot of crazy, off the wall things that most people wouldn't have the courage to do. I'm not bragging because a lot of those things were either done out of necessity or done out of stupidity. But a sense of fearlessness, a sense of adventure is super, super important because I've gotten comfortable living in Colorado for the past eight years, right? Living in this area for the past three years and I've gotten comfortable. My sense of adventure has not disappeared because I travel throughout the year and I do exciting things throughout the year, but in my everyday experience of going out and meeting new people, going out to new places locally, has gone down and down and down and down over the past several years. But a friend of mine said, I really admire you for going out and traveling around to these different cities all by yourself and not knowing what to do. And I go, well, I kind of planned it out. I activated my throat chakra and I said, what are the details to this trip? When am I going to fly? Who am I going to fly on? What kind of car am I going to get? How much money am I going to be spending at the Airbnbs, in gas, in the different places I'm going to eat at, the hot springs I'm going to visit? What's the time frame going to look like of doing these things? How long am I going to be driving every single day? How much time do I have in each of the towns and cities that I visit? So it's planning it out. So it's not like a going by the hip. I planned everything out before I left and I did it within about a day or so. And it was one of the most amazing trips I've ever been on because it was for me. I wasn't being I wasn't being told I had to go to Montana. Nobody was twisting my arm. I wasn't um um I wasn't being influenced in any way shape or form to go to Montana other than in my meditation said Billings Montana. That's it. And I followed that guidance. So number nine, be fearless. Number 10, this is an interesting one. No place is perfect. I realized that that was one of the lessons for me as I was traveling around because I was like, in my heart of hearts, I was thinking I'm gonna go to Billings, Montana. Most likely it'll be Billings, Montana that I'll go to, like to live. The other cities, eh. And surprise, surprise, city after city after city after city, I could see the beauty I could see the pluses, I could see the minuses. I could see many reasons to live here and many reasons not and, and less reasons not to live there. So I was having a problem. Instead of going, I'm only gonna find one city in Montana that I wanna live, it's gonna be obvious, it's gonna be super, super clear, that's the place I'm gonna stake my claim. Shocker. I had a hard time choosing which place to move to in Montana, which I wasn't expecting. So there is no perfect place and you do the best that you can. What does the energy say? What does the heart say? And what does the mind say? You bring all that information together to make the most workable solution for you. And then you move forward on it. But there is no perfect place, right? Because as I went to one place, I'm like, ooh, I really like this because this place doesn't this place has this and the other places didn't have it. I really like this, but uh it's missing this this and this. So there is no perfect place. Thomas, I'm a mistake. But it reminds me of one of the quotes from the movie Goodwill Hunting with Robin Williams as the therapist and he's meeting with the his patient, Matt Damon's character, Will. And he says, and he's giving him relationship advice. And he says, it's not about whether she's perfect or you're perfect, but the question is, are you perfect for each other? So it's not about this city in Montana being perfect or this city in Utah being perfect or this city in Colorado being perfect, 
But the question is, is that city perfect for you or is that city perfect for me? And that's what I was looking to uncover when I was there because I realized I can't find the perfect of the perfect of the perfect because I'm dynamic. Truth is dynamic. The place that I'm living to is dynamic because when I moved to Colorado eight years ago, I can wholeheartedly, unequivocally say at that time in my life, Colorado hands down was perfect. But do you see the word I used? Was perfect. It's no longer perfect for me. It might be perfect for somebody moving here. It might be perfect for the people that have lived here for 10, 15, 20 years, that have a home, that have children, that have family ties, work ties. It might be perfect for them, but it's not perfect for me. No longer serves my needs. Oops. Number 11. We're getting closer to the end of this list. Number 11 lesson I've learned in Montana. It awakens my patience. How do you develop a virtue? By practicing or not practicing? You develop a virtue by practicing. So you say, well, all right, I want to develop the virtue of humility. Then that means you are going to be have many opportunities to be humbled or to have your negative pride awakened. If you say courage, I want to practice my courage, that means you're going to be put in a situation where you're going to be fearful and you're going to have to overcome. I want to practice, uh, I want to practice my abundance. Then you're going to be a challenge with poverty because that's how the muscle, that's how the virtue gets developed is by practicing that virtue, right? So I was like, well, I guess one of the virtues I need to practice is patience. So guess what? Things I noticed in Montana, when you're in the city, people drive unbelievably slow. When you're getting customer service, while friendly, while genuine and authentic, it is very slow. The pace of Montana is very slow, which is difficult for me. So I have to change something in my brain to put up with the slowness. Then I have to practice more patience. But once you get on a major road and there's no speed limit sign, you can be as impatient as you want and blow by the people that are driving slow. There are no two lanes in most places. You just drive around the person in the one lane, right? So patience is a lesson I was learning when I was in Montana. 12, this is a very odd lesson that I've only experienced with Montana. I had a sense of nostalgia for a place I'd never been to. I had a sense of nostalgia for a place I'd never been to. Weird, right? But as I was traveling all over Montana to the 10 different cities, 1,372 miles over a six day period, I kept feeling this deep, deep, deep sense of familiarity with everyone in everywhere that I went. Even though I'd only been to Montana driving through on a Greyhound bus 17 years ago, but it was very, very familiar to me. Weird, right? Nostalgia. Number 13, now is the time to live. Now is the time to live. Now is the time to live. Thomas says exactly, perfection if, un, if attainable would come from the inside serenity. Ah, well said Thomas, excellent, yeah. 100%. Now is the time to live. So what did I realize about that? Thanks for being on. I appreciate you. Now is the time to live. I know some people always need to be motivated, like the rah-rah speeches. Some people never need to be motivated. They have intrinsic motivation. Some people don't like to be motivated, right? There's all the different spectrums, like the cliche inspirational talks or inspirational sayings that you see on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, wherever. You don't see a lot of inspirational things on Twitter for some reason, I don't know why. But now is the time to live because I've been longing for a cleaner, more fulfilling, more quiet, more prosperous living situation for the past year and a half, almost two years but I got comfortable, I got lazy, 
I got complacent with what I was, with where I was, because I had my groove, I had my routine, I had my system in place, but it wasn't exciting me, it wasn't inspiring me, it wasn't stretching me, as I learned from one of the masters talking about this, it wasn't stretching me to take me to the next level in my life, which is now. So I could spend another year in Denver, be uninspired, be unfulfilled, not stretch myself in the way that I'm capable of, or I can embrace the now and say, I now want to take my life to the next level. Not tomorrow, now. And it has been rewarding. One of the lessons I learned from one of the masters in a course that I took with her was the power of making a decision. Not making the decision when everything is in line when all the lights all the traffic lights are green then you go that's not life that's not realistic some lights are green some lights are yellow some lights are red some lights are red for a very long time sometimes there's detours sometimes there's construction sometimes the lights aren't working sometimes people cut you off sometimes there's accidents right but it's making the decision of this is where I'm going this is the direction of my life and so because of that lesson, I decided to spend six days in Montana when I wasn't even thinking of doing that prior. But something inside me said, now, 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 do it. Follow your bliss. Be fearless. And I did it. Now, what does that mean my life is going to look like in the coming months, in the coming years, in the coming decade? Don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't have the answers to that. But I know right now in this moment, what does the energy say? What does the heart say? What does the mind say? It says, go to Montana. It says, go to Montana. And then lastly, 14th lesson, 14 lessons, huh? Christian, I noticed you do um, multiples of seven. And I've noticed you've done other blog posts that have 14 in them. Is there a reason for that? Yes, there is a reason. Let go and move forward. Let go and move forward. The 14th lesson. Relative to what? I had a lot of people ask me, are you going to miss Colorado? Are you going to miss Denver? Are you going to miss the people that you've grown with and spent time with over the past eight years? No. I'm not. Why? Well, number one, nostalgia and sentimentality are impediments on the path for a spiritual aspirant. Because if you're always meditating on the past, past uh, mistakes, past joys, past partners, past jobs, past opportunities, you're always in the past. You're not in the now and you're dragging your past into the now, which will give you a very similar future. Makes sense, right? So nostalgia and sentimentality have to be removed on the path of the spiritual aspirant. So while I love the people and the circumstances and the opportunities that have been presented to me over the past eight years since coming to Colorado, I have to let go and move forward. I have to detach. We talk about this in one of the classes in Pranic Healing called the Inner Teachings of Buddhism Revealed, where the instructor, one of the masters that is teaching the class, is holding something, typically a water bottle, and then he's trying to pick up something else. What must he first do with the thing that he's holding? He must put it down, detach from that thing, and then attach to the new thing. So, in a relationship, you stay attached to the relationship when it's loving, when it's healthy, when it's going in the right direction, right? You detach from the relationship when it's no longer healthy, no longer beautiful. It becomes abusive and traumatic and chaotic. You detach. Make sense? So we don't just do this with relationships. We don't just do this with jobs. We don't just do this with the places that we are living but we are primarily doing it with our thoughts 
in our viewpoints that no longer serve us. It's about detaching from a viewpoint that doesn't serve us and attaching to a viewpoint that serves us. So I was very much attached to, I'm gonna be in Colorado, I'm gonna be in Denver, I'm gonna be in Denver, I'm gonna be in Denver. I was attached to the location that I was in while around me more and more chaos, more and more drama, more and more addiction, more and more turmoil, pollution was getting generated in the city that I thought, honestly, in my heart of hearts that I would die in. I thought that I would spend the rest of my life in Denver, Colorado. Some of you have been following my streams long enough to know that that's true. And I was very surprised that I was considering, even considering, never mind doing it, even considering leaving Denver. But what did I have to do? I had to detach from the thing that was causing me pain, suffering, and sorrow, and then attach myself to something that I believe in my heart of hearts now will give me greater fulfillment and happiness in all areas of my life. Now, does that mean I'm going to go to Montana and everything is going to be hunky-dory? No problems, no issues, no hiccups, no nothing? Of course not. That's not realistic. That's not what life is. But I'm setting the stage to have a greater level of happiness in all areas of my life more often. And even in the short time that I was there, I already felt I was at home. Weird, right? Never really visiting a place and you go there and you're like, I feel at home. You know how like when you go somewhere that's not your home and you're like, you feel out of sorts, you, you can't relax, you can't feel comfortable, you're like, I can't wait to be home again. I can't wait to be in my own bed. I can't wait to have my own things around me. That wasn't the case at all. I would literally be in the middle of nowhere in Montana, pull off to the side of the road, and I felt completely still and at peace. And I was like, at home. Very, very strange. So, yes, there's the lower part of me that will miss Colorado, miss the people, miss the experiences, miss the places that I can go hiking. I don't ski, but the places I can go hiking are my favorite spots that have become my favorite spots over the past eight years. We're like, oh, I, I can't go to Boulder this week, or I can't go to Rocky Mountain National Park this week, or I can't go down to Crestone and hang out with the llamas, or I can't go to Creed, Colorado, and completely and utterly lose myself in the silence. It is what it is, because there is no perfect place. It's just the question is, is the place I'm mo moving to and going to the perfect place? So those are my 14 lessons of what I learned traveling 1,362 or 72 miles, 10 cities, six days, three and a half tanks of gas, four Airbnbs, and one hotel, and one of the greatest trips of my entire life. Which is, you know what's funny? I went to a couple hot springs, but it wasn't like I was visiting anything spectacular in the sense of like the newest mall or a great invention or a, a wonderful museum. Diana, have a namaste. Or fill in the blank, right? It's not like I was, I was out in nature. That's it. But for me, that was extraordinary. For me, it made everything worth it rejuvenating, regenerating, and revitalizing. Super honored to have done this trip. And it opened up a doorway, right? It opened up a doorway of greater possibilities that I'm open and receptive to. I'm going out on faith. I'm trusting in God. I'm trusting in the great ones. I'm trusting in my spiritual teacher. I'm trusting in my higher self that this is the opening of the next chapter of my life. And I'm excited about it. I don't have really any anxiousness or fear. It's the finding out, and I got much, much, much greater clarity today of where I'm moving to in Montana. And then it's the typical logistical thing of, all right, storage, moving out, storage, and then getting a truck, and doing this move and then getting the new furniture and finding the place, right? It's all the logistical things, but with hope, 
with faith, with trust, and that this is for the highest good that's in alignment with my higher soul, I'm following my bliss, everything will work out. Yvonne, God bless you, Christian. I hope your new adventure brings you a lot of beautiful bliss. Thanks, Yvonne. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So my lease is up on the 20th of this month, the 20th of September, and then I'm going to be moving everything out pro earlier than that. I've already done my shifting of like utility, canceling utilities, changing my mailing address, all that stuff, and I'm looking for the next adventure. Beth says, good luck with your new adventure. Thank you, Beth. I appreciate you. And lastly, new promotion. New promotion. It's right below this video if you're watching this video live on Facebook or you're watching the replay on Facebook. Right below this video is a program I'm putting together that was recommended by one of the Master Pranic Healers because of my skill set and my ability to help people in their relationships. And this particular program is how to understand men as a spiritual woman. And you are going to get a holistic and very deep perception of men that you have never gotten before. I can guarantee that unequivocally. And in this eight-week program, it's going to be 90 minutes per week for eight weeks of lecture, healing, and Q&A in your relationships with men, covering the gambit from dating, sex, marriage, divorce, communication, the entire gambit. So you walk away going, I'm healed around my relationships with men and I understand much. I understand men much, much, much better. And when you understand something, you love it. And when you love it, you have transformation. So that's a program that I am offering uh, on the 22nd of October. So it's below this video. It's very simple. You're like, Christian, I want to register. Then email me. It's my email, christianrlong at gmail.com. That's it. So the information is below the video. Any questions about the program, message me on Facebook, email me at christianrlong at gmail. But I can unequivocally guarantee you that you will learn things you've never learned before and you'll have healing you've never gotten before. You'll have realizations and insight that you've never had before to shift you in your relationships with men because I realize it's a need in the market that has not been fulfilled. So, and it's a money back guarantee on your first session. So of the eight weeks, you do your first 90 minute session with the lecture, the healing and the Q and A, and you go, Christian, this isn't for me, then I just refund your money right there. Because I want you to transform your relationships with men, not just get your money. Does that make sense? And we have payment plans available as well. Deanna says, just when I finished to understand all about men. Ah, just when you thought you had it, right? Just when you thought you had it. So that is it, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you for logging on today and listening to tonight's stream. If you got value from today's stream and you have a friend or a family member who could log on and learn about the 14 lessons that Christian experienced in his travels through Montana, which I would consider some of them to be universal lessons, that are not just applicable to people moving to Montana or traveling through Montana, then feel free to share this video with them, tag, tag them on this video, tag me, tag somebody, and I'll be putting this video also on YouTube in the next couple days. So that is it. So I look forward to connecting with each and every one of you moving forward. May your life be blessed in every single area, and may you find happiness in all areas of your life. This is Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant wishing you a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and a beautiful life. Atma. Namaste. Bye-bye.